Alright YouTube and fellow preppers, I'm Jordy Prepper. So continuing on with the room by room preparedness things that are in a room. We're doing the living room today so I'll just start with some books. I picked these up at a local thrift type store. Um, they did lots of antique things, books, equipment, all sorts of things. And even though the knowledge is... I would say quite outdated now. The principles and everything within these books is still very sound. So not only do they serve as practical references, but they also serve as reading material to keep you occupied if the grid's down, etc. So from left to right, we have the Home Entertainer, which basically takes you through some old traditional games. Book of Hints and Wrinkles, that's practical things around the home, how to organize things, how to clean things, etc. Secrets of Successful Gardening, that's just basic gardening tips really, uh, how to grow things. Practical Information for All, that's basically just practical stuff that anyone should really be aware of and should know about. This will change from country to country, but this is obviously valid for here in England where I am. The Practical Way to Keep Fit, lots of techniques and tips in there how to keep fit. The Home Counselor. That has lots of various things to do with law and also cover the, covers things like contracts etc. Just some basic lawful stuff which needs to be known. Practical Home Doctor, that is really just what it says, it just tells you how to deal with basic first aid problems that may arise. So it's a very good idea to have in your living room knowledge and information in book form. Yeah, if the grid's down, you're not going to have electrical items, obviously. But they also serve as not only giving you good practical advice to anyone who, you know, in the in your group which will need the information, but it also serves to kill time, to lift your spirits, and, you know, it just occupies the mind. Because, obviously, you know, in emergency situations, things can be stressful. Tissue paper, good, good thing to have in your living room, obviously. I mean, this is something most living rooms probably have. But just keep a couple of spare boxes, you know, I mean, um, they don't take up a massive amount of room. And if you are thinking about what you're going to have in your rooms in case of an emergency, then obviously have a big clear out first. And then you'll find that you'll have more room to, to house emergency supplies. So box of tissues, boxes of tissues, um, you could even keep a few loo rules in your living room just as you know an extra stash for when your main supply runs out you know if you haven't already got one a carbon monoxide alarm is a very good thing to have in your living room obviously you just don't want dangers like you know that carbon monoxide building up in a room especially when other people are going to be probably using it for sleeping and you know just general hunkering down and if you're trying to be covert then obviously you'd have to think about disabling these but such a good investment to get and like a gas inspector who came around and checked the gas appliances one time said uh, don't get the cheapest one but don't get the most expensive one so get the one in the middle be sure to put one carbon monoxide detector in per room that has some sort of gas appliance also another good investment is a hygrometer so you can get a digital one like this one or get more of a traditional one but that measures temperature and relative humidity. Now, like as I said in a previous video where I'm talking about quality of air, yeah, it's good to monitor just the basic principles of the quality of the air in the property that you're in. So make sure you have fire alarm, carbon monoxide alarm, but also measure temperature and relative humidity because these are things that are going to affect people if they're staying in the room and Obviously, you don't want to make compound any issues or make anything worse by having an environment that's a bit uncomfortable for people. Candles are good to have as a backup to torches. I've pretty much decided that, yes, I do have candles to provide light and heat. The majority of the light that I'm going to rely on during any sort of situation is I'm going to rely on torches. They're simply much safer, so especially if you're being covert and you you know you're trying to maintain a level of OPSEC you obviously you don't want anything that can give you away as well as the potential hazards that open flames have in a confined space 
So again, the trusty old fire extinguisher. We've been talking about open flames. Make sure you just get yourself a suitable fire extinguisher and some firefighting equipment. And, you know, just check the gauges every now and then. Just make sure that the pressure's good. You know, just do some usual checks. Find out in your local area where you can take a fire extinguisher to get serviced if you need to. There really just isn't a price, I don't think, on safety. And there, there certainly isn't a price on life. So obviously if you do have candles, make sure you have some out ready to go in case of an emergency. But also have some spares. So these are just a couple of spares B wax candles. These are really good, like they last for absolutely ages. Um, and the light that they put out is bright. But the other advantage to beeswax candles is that they actually filter the air from contaminants. Um, and also the waxy, the white residue which builds up um, can actually be used as well. You can rub it on your skin, etc. Um, so all in all, you know, the beeswax type candles are very, very practical. They have like multiple uses. Spare matches, make sure you have plenty of matches on hand in every room, in the kitchen, um, in the bathroom, you could put some and just have some in the living room ready. Obviously these are for lighting the candles, but you may want to get something a bit safer and which doesn't put out like a smell when you put out the candles. So I just have a couple of lighters spare as well. So really with my thinking these days that I'm going to rely on torchlight, the matches are basically like a last resort thing. You can obviously use the matches individually themselves as a source of light, very very temporary and short amount of light, just to get your bearings uh, if all else fails. Same goes for the lighters, really. You know, they'll. These are a very small independent light source, but the purpose is just to light another source of light, really. Citronella tea light candles are something that I've got. Um, I'm going to be moving away from fragranced stuff. These are just ones that I'm using up at the minute. In summer, they can be handy for keeping away flies. But obviously, as some people have pointed out, you you don't really want to have any sort of fragrance coming from your property. So having talked about fragrances and not giving you position away because someone has like sniffed you out, Chances are that you're going to be doing more physical exertion as well. Now the grid's down because everything's going to be, which are really just serve to make us more lazy. Um, people are going to be more physically active, so they're going to they're going to whiff a bit more of things. They're going to smell. So um, there could be things coming out of both ends, which um, which doesn't particularly smell very nice. So you know you may just need the, some relief from that. People are often physically bad and physically sick and. You know, especially with the like bowel problems, incense can give a bit of relief from that. Uh, if your position allows it, and you believe it's safe enough, then obviously, you know, you want to be just doing the normal thing of opening your windows. So initially, I was buying these sorts of candles, and the the it's a beeswax candle, so it does burn longer than most candles, but. It still wasn't burning long enough, though. so I mean that's why I changed to, you know, the church candle, kind of, uh, kind of style. Changed it from the tapered version, like you see here. But again, you know, these ones can be handy. I have, I have this type in a level zero bug out kit, which I've got, which was inspired from uh, main preppers tiered um, survival kits. That's it, I mean that's really all I have in the living room. It's, this is just geared towards what I have and what I need in a living room. Obviously, you know, you could you could build up a massive supply of things that you would never ever really use. So, but you know, I, I do use all this. There's not one piece of gear in my living room which is um, wasted or or doesn't have a very specific purpose and use and that's it so thanks a lot for watching guys be safe 
be prepared and I'll see you next time.